Hello everyone and welcome to Zach's Garage. Now firstly, I apologise for taking so long to upload, but it's been a busy few months. With the Coney Sec turning up and with the new toy that's turning up soon, there's a lot coming. But as a little surprise, we have bought a new daily driver. Now as you can tell by the title, it is this, a 2018 Range Rover SVR. And we are at a very rainy Goodwood today, and as it's a 4x4 video, that's exactly what we want. I don't want to show it to you in the sun, but by pure chance when we turned up, this old school Defender drove past, so I thought it's really cool to be able to see the old and the new. So, before the person who owns this has to head off, let's head to some B-roll, and then I'm going to run you through the star of the show, the SVR. So, without further ado, the twins, I guess. Right, so let me introduce you to my nickname car, Vader. Uh, now, because it is a Santorini black with chrome wheels, I thought, you know, that kind of fits. So as cheesy as it may be, that's what I'm going with. Now, the options on the car, it is loaded with carbon. Uh, the only thing it doesn't have on it is the carbon bonnet. But you would have noticed by now, 2018, um, it is a used car. Now, if anyone knows about fluctuation of prices, it's quite obvious when you buy one of these new, they depreciate pretty quickly and pretty viciously. Um, now, buying it new is, you know, congratulations, fair enough, but buying it second hand, there is no difference. We bought the car with 5,000 miles on, so 5,000 miles in a new car really is nothing. So that's why I'm calling it a new Range Rover. So, yes, let me run through some rather cool features and then we'll head to the road and take it for a drive. Now, if we go from the side, there is lots of carbon on it, but you will see that in the B-roll. I want to fix on the main things that you can see with the car. Optional 22-inch chromed wheels. Land Rover do offer a more chromey effect, but when these are actually clean, bearing in mind I've done probably 100 miles in the car so far today, they're a little bit dirty. Um, I'm not really too worried about that. You'll just have to take my word for it, saying that they are, you know, pretty chrome. But there are so many cool gadgets on this car. So, a prime example, let's say I'm holding my shopping bags and I walk to here. How do you open the bonnet? Just like that. Now, isn't that the coolest thing you've ever seen? Now, I know a lot of you would have seen that, but what a cool effect to have and a bit of a showpiece as well. So, there's also some other features that are the reason why we bought this car. So, let's head to the back and I'll show you. So now, as mentioned at the beginning of the video, we actually have dogs at home. Now, if any of you guys have got dogs at home, you'll know what it is like transporting them. The older they get, sometimes they struggle to get in, you have to lift them. But one of the things that really caught our eye with this is the button just here. Now, if you see, the car is now going down. Now, I know this is something that lots of cars nowadays have, but it's something so important, especially when you're using the 4x4s for what they're meant for. Now, that is not a small drop, that's a big drop, and a dog, that's going to make things a lot easier for a dog. Um, so yeah, and then you can just shut the boot again, using the button, and there you have it. So that is the back end of the car, greeted with more carbon, and then we'll get on to the interior and the technology inside. But, first of all, let's just start it up. Now something that I found out with this car in a little box in the cubby hole of the car, which I didn't know about, is this. It's called the Land Rover Active Key. Now as you can tell it's raining and this is getting wet but it is waterproof. And what it does is this is the key for the Land Rover. So you can leave this inside the car and use this to put it against the R of the Rover when there's a little scanner and it will lock the car. Now that deactivates this key activates the wrist key, which means if you go swimming or if you go to the gym, then all you have to do to unlock it is press the boot button once, 
put the R of Rover up to the car, it'll unlock, and then that deactivates the wrist and activates the key again. So there's lots of clever technology in this car, and uh, well, to be honest with you, I just keep finding more. Now, you're probably wondering, why is it raining inside of a car? Well, we've got the sunroof open at the moment, and that is because the interior is black on black. Now, the reason for that, and the reason why we chose the black on black out of all the cars that were on the market is because what we use the car for. Now, realistically, for what we use this car for, we should have bought a 1990 Suzuki Jimny because we do use it a hell of a lot. We put dogs in the car, we put loads of stuff in the car, but that's what these cars are used for. And the reason why we bought the SVR is because we enjoy being able to put our foot down and hear Satan come out the exhaust pipe. So now if we have a look through here, you've got the drive mode selector, or further down here, you have this twisty knob thing. Now you can press that down and it goes into auto and that automatically selects which one is most relevant. Now Land Rover is very clever in the fact that you could genuinely take this off a really rutty road and it will automatically select which one you need. Um, personally, I leave this off so then you can manually select each one. So you've got grass, gravel, snow, which is here. Um, that is if you're on a muddy field, I usually select that anyway, just in case, because, well, it means that you won't get stuck, well, hopefully you won't get stuck. But if we look up here, grass, gravel, snow program has been selected, whilst vehicle stationary, foot off, etc. to activate low traction launch. So what that does is that if you're in a field, and you're doing, for instance, pulling away as fast as possible. It's not launch control, but it just stops the wheels from skidding and you getting into a rut, if you will. You can keep going. So, the one that I most often use, this one, dynamic. You put that in dynamic and you'll notice that lights up. And what that does is it opens the pipes up. Now, originally the SVR, when you press this, this lit up, but actually that is just a button to activate up here. And you have two modes, my setup and factory setup. So factory setup is everything dynamic and as stiff as possible, as hard as possible. My setup is the same, but what you can do is that if you press engine on comfort, which means you get a you know, less responsive engine, the gear shift as fast as possible, the steering is responsive and the suspension. But realistically, what you probably do, suspension comfortable, and that's it because then you get a comfortable ride but with the sporty setup um so yeah and then you can go along here and you can press g-force and you can see how many g's you're doing uh, if you reset it that'll bring you back to zero so if you're doing like a 0 to 60 test you can map the throttle and it will tell you maximum g's you got out of going from zero to 60 and 60 back to zero um throttle and brake so if i throttle and brake there we go that pretty self-explanatory and you also have a timer a lap timer um whoever's taking on one of these on the track fair play to them hint hint i will be taking this on the track at some point uh not too sure which one it will be but we're going to organize something now down here on the side you also have the different options in terms of what you want you can connect your phone um you've got uh that's navigation uh weather which i think is quite interesting um and then news um but I mean, realistically, you leave it on source if you've got your phone playing through there or whatnot. Now, if we go down here, there's some more cool stuff. I understand uh, off-road information. So what this will show is if I turn the wheel, it turns the wheels. And what I find very funny is it actually changes the spec of the rims depending on which one you've chosen. Um, you can lock the diffs, so if I press that, or not maybe not i'm working this out as we go along um you've got compass for off-road stuff so at the moment we're three degrees uh north actually we're almost dead well look at that we are three degrees off perfectly north um if that matters and then terrain use this to it so it explains all the different handling dynamic program setting blah 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 um now something very cool is you can go on camera now cameras obviously it shows your surround but if you press the camera icon here you press to the side that shows that wheel there so if you're trying to park and once that goes away you've got both of your wheels so you can see exactly when you're parking because well no one likes to curb, the, curb their wheels um then we've got the back view as well that's sort of semi off the rear then if you go oh hang on 
if you go here, that's dead backwards. Um, and then, what have we got here? Uh, front view, so that is, if you're pulling out, where that is is just over there as well, and where that is is just over there. So if you're pulling out of a junction, because the bonnet's quite long, some people need it. Generally, if you don't know what is actually there, you probably shouldn't be pulling out anyway. Back to 360, it shows you everything around the car. Um, so generally parking bits, but still quite interesting nonetheless. Um, so down here you've got the seat controls as well. At the moment, both me and my cameraman have heated seats on because it is a very cold day. But this also has, if we twist down here, cool seats. Um, personally, anyone who likes really cold seats is a little bit... I don't know, I'm just a bit suspicious of that because I've had about four minutes with the cold seats on and uh, it is not a pleasant feeling, put it that way. Um, now these are multifunctional, you press the outside to do the seats, press the outside again to adjust the heat of the fan, and then this side you press off, and if you press the fan, sorry, you can adjust how much fan you want. But as you can see, you can't actually get any of where the vents are, but if we press climate, then it shows this at the moment it's got everything on if i switch that off we've got no vents on that's your typical up here vents and then to do defrost you press that that uh that's electronic but then if you press that that will open the vents up at the front and defrost now one criticization i have or one thing that i don't quite agree with is the defrost system on it it's not the best but we're not going to dwell on the bad stuff. Um, you'll notice there's carbon all over. Uh, so you've got the carbon centre console. You've got the carbon areas down by the side, by the doors. The little cubby compartment. And just, just brilliant. Right, so what makes this car an SVR? Well, it's got the uprated V8 supercharged engine, which is just nuts. When we get on the road, I'll explain more to you about that. But there is carbon on the exterior and interior. There is the racing seats. There's lots of Alcantara bits. Now, obviously, some of this stuff is optional, um, like the Alcantara headliner. Um, but it's small things that actually make quite a big difference. It's panoramic sunroof. Um, we are getting wet, but that's because we need more light because it's a black and black interior. Um, so I'm going to head to some B-roll so you can see what makes this car an SBR. And then we will head out on the road and I'll show you really what makes this car an SVR. So, the road test, what's happening with the car? Well, the first impression is that it's sporty, but whilst being very comfortable. Um, now, obviously, purchasing an SVR, you know you're gonna get something stiffer than the normal sport, and a hell of a lot quicker, and that's exactly what this car is. Um, as much as it's semi-stiff, it's also very comfortable. I mean, it's so much more comfortable than the car we replaced. Um, the car we replaced was so awful I couldn't actually show it on YouTube because it just annoyed me. Um, it was actually a very good quality car, but I didn't want to talk about it. I don't like to give false reviews, and I didn't like the car, so I won't name what the car was. It was a modern car, um, but anyway, we won't dwell on that. So, uh, how do I drive this car? Well, 90% of the time I'm in dynamic. I'm in dynamic now simply because of the noise. Now. The noise is addictive to say the least. Um, it's just unbelievable. And it's something I loved about the F-Type SVR. And so when we're looking at a Range Rover, we could have gone the normal sport, but there's something about the old. And that's with the exhaust valves closed, you know? It, it just, it keeps it nice and quiet. 
but yet if you want it to be, it's an absolute hooligan. Um, as I said multiple times in the video, I know you guys already know it, we use the car. Um, this is going to be our most used car out of the collection. Um, and everyone who's driven it has been over the moon with the car. Um, especially myself, it's actually better than I thought it was. Um, and I hadn't driven one before, so we just bought it and hoped for, the, hoped for goodness that it was going to be as good as everyone said it was. Um, and if it wasn't that, it was better. Um, the technology, I'm quite technology savvy, and I thought it wasn't the easiest to get used to. Um, the fact that you have three dis different systems on three different screens was a little bit confusing, but once you get to work it out, it's actually very clever, and it's also very helpful. Um, the feel of the car in terms of comfort, it's very comfortable. Um, the seats, of course, have so much lumber, um, you can adjust it all, it's just, yeah, just wonderful. Um, the rear seats, typical Land Rover rear seats, not the most comfortable, but you know, it's not a Bente, you can put it that way, but this is smooth enough to justify not going for a Bentayga. Um, that was the competitor to this uh, in terms of what we were looking at. And so, yeah, uh, for some reason I've got someone right behind me who is trying to, I think, overtake me. So if you give me just one moment. And you can do stuff like that. You've got idiots tailgating you all the time. You've got so much power. And by the way, I didn't break the speed limit there. We are on a 60 mile an hour road, so. But anyway, um, driving footage, I can get you loads of it. Um, exhaust tone, skip to the exhaust tone right now. <laughs> This has been a very short but and probably not very informative video on what I think is one of the best SUVs out there. Um, I'm over the moon with it. Um, it's Inscape Jaguar Land Rover. Thank you so much for helping the purchase. Um, it was brilliant. They'll be down below. Also, thank you to Goodwood for bringing that Land Rover out. The guy really didn't need to. We just caught him as I turned up and I was like, excuse me, I really want you in the video. So thank you to him. I didn't get his name, but if you're watching the video, I did give him a card. So thanks again. Um, but yeah, if there's anything you want to know about the car, uh, please drop a comment below. I'll either reply or shoot another video on the car if I feel like it's getting loads of attention. I know this is every YouTuber's car at the moment, um, but that's not the reason we bought it. The reason we bought it is because it is a genuinely brilliant, brilliant car. Um, will we be modding it? No, uh, we don't need to mod this car. It sounds fantastic, and when you're putting dogs in, you don't need a straight through exhaust. So. Anyway, from me, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe, like the video, and stay tuned for lots more Kony Set content coming up. Uh, the Regera is inbound, and the next video, you all guys will be learning all about that. So, without further ado, thanks for watching, and catch you guys next, later.